First off, congratulations. The movie's exceptional. Thank, Thank you. you. Roman, I'll come your way first. And I'll preface this question by saying that the book is also exceptional. Thank but you. is there anything about seeing the story unfold on screen that amplified something for you, made a concept or a scene more powerful than you ever realized it could be? Yeah, that's a great question. The the What I was writing, I think, in pursuit of was a feeling of unsteadiness and that the the idea that the story is sort of shifting under the feet of the reader constantly. And it was such an interesting experience to watch Sam's movie and experience that as an as a as a viewer. And I know this story inside and out. It is from my head and I was still able to access that. And so I think it reminded me, I've heard um, Sam talk a lot about uh, tone is the word you use mm -hmm. when you talk about this. And it was really interesting. It's been interesting for me to think about tone, to think about that particular noun and how, how I'm going to apply that in the work I'm doing going forward. Because I just finished a book and I usually, I, I think of it maybe as mood or atmosphere, but these are all sort of synonyms for the same thing that if you, I, I think what you've said is that if you get that right, then everything else falls into place. And I think that's really an accurate and interesting insight artistically. I'm very much looking forward to checking out that next book Thank now. <laughs> um, Sam, for you in the adaptation process, I was curious, did you ever think about doing any cutaways to other people beyond these two families? I just kept thinking about one moment in the book in particular. It's when they're doing laundry and they mention the, the laundry facility that they go to and what happens to the person that runs it. So did you ever consider adding something like that to the film? No, because, again, I think when when you think about something that works so well in a literary medium, yeah. I felt for me, once you do that in a sort of a, a cinematic approach, you break some sort of spell when you break POV like that. And just to kind of piggyback on tone, I remember the feeling that I wanted was this sort of that you, this movie kind of starts off like a dream and it turns into a nightmare. I mean, that's like a very uh, a sort of visceral feeling that I've experienced. And I, 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 I wanted to really, um, uh, the, really channel that. And I think the way to do that is to stick with these people and to not ever escape the borders of their world. Um, it, it, there's claustrophobia in there, but there's also this kind of, like you said, this sand shifting underneath their feet. Um, you just don't quite know what's outside of those kind of four corners of their world. And um, I think that just added to this sort of nightmarish quality to the film that I think would, you would have lost if you cut away to other people. I have a feeling you're spot on with that. <laughs> um, I'm going to end with what is essentially the, the million dollar question with a story like this. Sam, I'll toss it to you. But Ramon, you can chime in if you want as well, because this does pertain to the book, too. What is it like preserving mystery and challenging viewers to engage, but while also making sure that the story is satisfying and offering enough? You know what? I will say this is this <laughs> look going into it. And reading the book and knowing how the book kind of beautifully handles ambiguity in the end, I remember as an as sort of a reader and then as a you know in thinking about the movie, I love movies where the end of the film is the beginning of a conversation. Um, and when you answer all these questions, it closes the door on that. And for me, that robs the audience of something. I want. I want my favorite movie going experiences is leaving the theater and going to a coffee shop and arguing with my friends for two hours about what it all meant, hearing other people's interpretations. And um, and I also just think that's that is sort of reflective of life. We face ambiguities all the time. And um, sure, it can be frustrating. Sure, it can even feel unsatisfying. But um, there's something really authentic and true to life about it that you can't you can't take that away from. And I really wanted to commit to that. And again, it was it was sort of your book's ending that really made me inspired to kind of keep that in the film. That's kind of you. I, I, I love that the film retains that. I think it is a gesture of respect to the audience. I think that people, I think that there's a lot of cultural forms that maybe um, 
without meaning to talk down to an audience a little bit. And I think audiences can handle stuff that is difficult, that is a question mark. And I think the adaptation so really beautifully walks that line where I, I, I know the movie, I know the book, of course, but I'm sitting there having this sort of thrilling experience as a viewer. And then I turned to my husband after we saw the first screening and I was like, we, we have to discuss this. Like, what a great feeling. What a great <laughs> feeling when a, a work of art can, can provide that. The best feeling and the yeah. best feeling with an adaptation where you get two versions of the same story that wind up enhancing the other. I feel I like that's so. the best scenario yeah. with a book to film adaptation. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.